Hello and welcome. This is World Business Report. I'm Sally Bundock. It's a packed program, including some unexpected good news from China about its economy. Factories are moving up a gear. We'll fill you in. Let's, though, start with what's going on in the United States in Springfield, Missouri, where President Trump has begun a speaking tour to try and build support for his planned tax reforms. He described the U.S. tax code, which hasn't been reformed for three decades, as self-destructive. And he called for a more competitive system to boost jobs and wages, repeating his ambition to cut America's corporate tax rate to 15 percent. Now, on paper, the U.S. corporation tax rate at the moment is one of the world's highest, at 35 percent. Now, taking into account various tax breaks, top U.S. firms pay a bit less than that, on average around 28.6 percent. However, that does compare very unfavorably with rates around the world. China, it's 25 percent at the moment. In the U.K., it's just come down to 19. And, of course, Ireland is 12.5%, where many top U.S. firms have their overseas headquarters, which has led, of course, to this $2.5 trillion worth of profits channeled overseas by top U.S. companies as they look to avoid the American tax man. And the U.S. national debt, in the meantime, is spiraling towards $20 trillion. So would cutting taxes boost the economy and tempt U.S. firms to bring more profits home? Or would it just do more damage to the government's finances? That's an argument the president will have to take on in Congress, as Michelle Fleury reports from New York. Well, let's get the view of Professor Alan Auerbach, who's Professor of Economics at the University of California, Berkeley. Good to see you again. Give us nice your you. take on President Trump's challenge. Will he pull it off and get a 15% corporation tax rate in the U.S.? Very closely, thank you for your time. Professor Alan Arwa joining us from California. Now, let's go to Asia and talk about the economy because uh, the world's second biggest saw a good move upwards in August in terms of the factory sector, and that uh, was better than most economists were predicting, so it will e ease concern about the health of the Chinese economy. Let's go to our Asia Business Hub where Sharon Jitlail is joining us. Nice to see you, Sharon Jit. Um, so, so tell us more. I mean, the number's looking good for China, which follows hot on the heels of the U.S. revision upwards as well. Absolutely. You said it, Sally. So uh, most markets in the region are going up as a result because of all of this good news. I mean, uh, China, uh, as you said, uh, posting stronger than expected factory uh, sector growth in August. The, the Purchasing Managers Index, uh, it's the official one. It's a gauge of the health of the manufacturing sector. And it came in at 51.7, which is crucially above the 50-point mark that separates growth from contraction. Now, analysts had been expecting it to be actually fairly little change from July. So China's resilience is giving uh, something of an extra boost to the global recovery, especially, as, as you just said, Sally, at a time when the U.S. economy seems to be bouncing back, too. Of course, you just heard that the, the U.S. growth had been revised up uh, to, uh, to register growth, the fastest pace in more than two years. China, though, has had to manage its economy much more carefully, though, because it's cracked down on riskier types of lending, it's put in place tough curbs to get its housing market under control, and we saw it growing by a better than expected 6.9% in the, the first half. So uh, we are seeing this better data, but the services sector, though, hasn't shown as much growth. All right, thanks a lot, uh, Sharon Jit. Uh, we'll show you the numbers at the end of the program for markets. Now, let's talk oil. The industry's got used to lower prices, but the boss of Shell, Ban Van Burden, has told the BBC prices could start rising soon as underinvestment reduces the supply of crude. Good news for oil companies, you might think, but not necessarily, as he told our business editor, Simon Jack. Ben Van Verden there, the boss of Shell, is talking to Simon Jack. Just to say, let's look at markets now. The price of oil declining, actually, but gasoline is going up and up. This is all to do with Hurricane Harvey pounding the energy-rich uh, Gulf of Mexico coastline. Mixed markets, slightly down for Hong Kong, but overall sentiment is positive, thanks to the news from China and also the GDP number from the U.S. the night before. I will see you very soon.